would be uh, Malik Hardy. Are you able to do a video, Malik? Or, or, or you're, you're on telephone. And um, I just want to make sure you all know that um, this is being recorded. Yeah, we're, we're recorded for a uh, possible future broadcast. We're going to put it up on YouTube if anybody wants to refer to it. Um, and we have a lot of background noise. Yeah, there's a and lot of background noise. Mute their phones with the exception of Malik. And uh, Malik, are you still with us? Yes, sir, I was actually trying to see if my laptop would pull up the link. I was text the link. That's why I just jumped on my phone okay. after the phone call. All right. Um, give me one second. And I have a, a few folks on that uh, uh, I can't see the names. Is Miss Blue one of those by chance? No. Trying to see if I have it in my email. All right. Well, how about Malik? While you work on that, if I can jump to uh, number three, which would be Patrina Paxton. I hate that. Kind of jump ahead and put you up first. Uh, are you ready to, to go forward? I am. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. So I, are we actually just supposed to go into what yep, was? Yeah, you can uh, just jump right in. We have three minutes. We'll start with uh, tell us about yourself and uh, what you believe, um, why you believe you're a good candidate for the position and what your goals are, are over the next few years. You have three minutes total for that. Okay. Go through all the candidates, and then at the end of that, people can ask questions of the different candidates. Okay. Um, well, again, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Katrina S. Paxton. I have been a resident of the area for a little bit over um, seven, a little bit over 16 years. Um, I've been a current resident of Colmer Manor for approximately 11 years. Um, I'm originally from the Midwest. I've served as a youth council president of the south suburbs of Chicago, Illinois. Um, I decided to relocate to the DMV area to actually pursue my degree at Howard University. Uh, during my time living here in Colmer Manor, um, I have grown a very, very, very deep interest in actually being a part of um, the growth of the town. Uh, my interest in becoming the council member of Ward 1 um, actually stems from my passion. Um, in my passion in offering sort resources to communities um, as well as being um, more of a community activist for uh, the different opportunities that are allowed in our community. Um, if elected as your ward, ward one council member, um, it would be my goal to actually invest my skills and leadership and to support our town in more youth and senior programs. I would also like to see our youth be more involved um, within our town so that they don't have to go far or actually away from the town in order to engage in um, extracurricular activities. I'd also like to enhance the community of our tenured residents um, to make sure that they are still involved and heard. I know as we continue to actually live through what is now this pandemic, um, I'd actually like to encourage alternative ways to embrace connections amongst and across our community, um, as well as impl implementing virtual meetups. And I'd actually like to um, embrace and enhance what would be a, um, di a community directory uh, where it would allow for us to support our fellow neighbors um, in their business endeavors, especially those of Ward One. Um, and I can always actually close this out to commit that if I was elected as your Ward One council member, that I actually promise to make sure that I'm always available and to make sure that my fellow residents are heard. Right. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And next, um, we'll go to uh, Malik Harding. I don't think we have the video, but we'll go ahead uh, with the audio. Malik, are you still with us? I'm back. Can you see me now? Cannot see you. Oh, okay. But we'll, <laughs> um, oh, wait. Oh. I see you now. Ah. You <laughs> Thanks for having me. Uh, right. it, so I just go. Yep, go on it right into it. 
My name is Malik Harding. I'm 24 years old and I was born and raised in Comar Manor. I'm a young man of many hats. I'm a social worker currently, a electrical assistant currently, and a representative of my family and community. I've seen and experienced much of the transformations in this town and personally had a hand in some of it. And in short, I'm an optimistic, driven candidate with the history of investing in this neighborhood. I believe that I'm a good candidate for this position because I've unknowingly been doing it. During my time with Maryland General Assembly as a liaison for Delegate Diana Fennell, I interacted with many municipalities, created bridges of networks and resources. One thing that I've noticed as a resident is that the community has but we've lost unity and grown stagnant. The resources established have been reused over and over, and it's time to enhance our town. Within three to four years of serving, I plan to enhance our great town by dealing with the issues we share, providing resources for those that don't, don't have the support, and develop a unified community by engaging families and encouraging youth to be stakeholders within the community. And yes, that's, that's what I got for you guys. All right, thank you. And uh, do we have Ms. Blue on board? Yes. Um, okay, well, Ms. Blue is, is with us. Um, there are uh, three candidates for uh, Ward 1, and Ms. Blue, uh, I think, has had some technical difficulties joining us. Um, she's the incumbent, so uh, go ahead, uh, Ms. Blue, with your three minutes. Hello, I'm Lois A. Blue of 3912 Newton, council member in Ward 1. For 27 years, I work to ensure our town is safe and healthy and educational and a fun place to live. A neighborhood of all ages and races. <clears throat> a love place for people to work, worship, and live. Uh, also, I have worked many years on committees with Maryland National Capital Park and Planning, Fort Howe Jobs for Youth, advisory board member, graduated from the MML Academy. I look forward to serving the citizens with many new ideals. <laughs> Cleaner streets, cleaner towns, twice a week trash pickup, better relationships with our police coverage and citizens, after school programs, and concerns the needs of our senior citizens. Also, uh, second chance programs to help those that need of job assistance, shelter, food, educational programs, therapy, and mental health assistance, and drug prevention programs, treating all the people with respect and fair. And I, as I said, I'm open to any new ideals. These are some of the requests that, from citizens in Ward 1 that they ask of me as a council member. Let's live together and work together and watch Comer Matter grow. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Ms. Blue. And uh, that concludes our uh, three candidates for Ward 1. Uh, moving on to Ward 2 and alphabetically, we have Irina Hobbs. Ms. Hobbs. Yes. Um, thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Irina Hobbs, and I was um, born and grew up in Ukraine. I moved to the United States at the age of 20, and I, I came here to teach on a Fulbright scholarship. I taught languages at the university level and continue to do so currently. However, now it is um, done remotely online um, due to the pandemic, and it's been a challenge for a lot of students, uh, my students, and as we know, the school children in particular. Um, and um, I, um, I have been a member, an active member of the community. I've been a part of the green team um, uh, for about five years. Um, I uh, also served as a communication secretary at the board of the Fulbright Association, and I am on the board of uh, the Port Towns Community Development Corporation. And I also have a degree in public administrations from American University. And um, uh, my goals for the town is, as an educator, I mentioned how challenging it is for uh, a lot of families now to deal, um, to educate their children that, that are um, receiving their education at home. I would like to uh, provide, uh, look at the, the opportunity to create a tutor um, support or tutor help, online tutoring for school children. Um, for maybe for our families who are suffering um, currently, um, provide some men mental counseling. And also um, knowing that there's a lot of businesses, a lot of contractors residing in our neighborhood, I would like to tap into that resource and potentially create um, a system, I called it a, of workforce reliance, when we can 
recommend and um, employ our neighbors if we know what they do and what kind of work they can provide. Of course, Nextdoor has um, some of that information, but it's rather scattered. I would like to see it more organized so we can engage uh, and employ, um, create more work opportunities for our neighbors. Um, so I look forward um, to serving you, you to being part of, part of the community. I've been living in, here since 2012 and I, I've seen a lot of change and thank you so much to the current mayor um, who's done a lot of work in the past years and I've, it, it has changed dramatically. And um, looking forward to um, working with you all um, in the future. Thank you. All righty, thank you. And next we have Anthony Mills, candidate for Ward 2. All right, can you hear me? We can hear you. All right, how you doing everyone? My name is Anthony Mills and I'm 31 years old. Uh, I've been living in Coma Manor for, uh, I would say a very long time. Uh, some of you, I probably grew up with your, well, with your, uh, your sons, daughters, your cousins. Uh, I've been around the community for a long time. I'm a fellow alumni of Blainsborough High School, so I'm really connected and, you know, a lot of people that's amongst the community. Uh, what makes me a good candidate for the community, uh, I want to bring change. I want to bring change for the youth. I want to focus on that to maybe help Sadara, you know, uh, to bring programs and really just invest back into Coma Manor. And I just feel like I'm the guy that could, you know, could do the job. All right. Oh, okay. that'll be my time. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and let's see. That uh, concludes our two candidates for Ward Two. For Ward Three, we have one candidate, and that's uh, Mr. Doug Bowles, who's with us tonight. Go ahead. Good evening, everyone. I have the gift of gab, so I've written everything down to keep myself. Uh, within the three minutes so here we go good evening colmar manor it's great to be with you guys i hope you're all safe and well during these very trying times my name is doug bowles and i've lived on 41st avenue in ward 3 since 2010. i've lived in prince george's county for 27 years and i was born in salem virginia my father was a truck driver my mom was a factory worker and a homemaker neither of them finished high school but they were determined to make a better life for my brother and myself and they raised us to be active citizens they served at the clothes closet and food pantry and helped out all of our neighbors in need. My brother was a policeman and a veteran of the United States Air Force. And unfortunately, we lost him this year to COVID-19. I've been an educator for nearly 25 years. I currently teach musical theater at Howard University. I've also been a professional performer for 32 years. I've performed in locations around the world and all around the United States. I've directed over 200 full-scale theatrical productions. I was an executive assistant for the branch of Chemical Bank here in DC, uh, which is no longer there, but, and I served four years as a contract specialist for the International Food Policy Research Institute. IFPRI focused on shaping food policy around the world. And then as now there was not a scarcity of food in the world, but often distribution issues in government policy or corruption kept that food from going to the rightful place, which is the mouths of the people. Government should serve the people and I would like to serve you like that opportunity. You may have seen me walking around town with my little gray and white dog, Louie. That dog has introduced me to more people than you can imagine. And uh, many of us really do look out for each other. It's a community. Colmar Manor is, is Skip and Yolanda and Martha, Brenda, Delegate Fennell, Councilwoman Jackson. It's Mayor Barrow, Miss Blue, Chief Stone, Miss Julianne. It's Luis and Terry, Bobby, Teresa, Carlos and Kurt. In short, Comar Manor is a town, a family, and not just a place to close your door and pretend to be alone. I want us to foster even more community, and I think our differences can be our strength. Every aspect of my professional life has involved collaboration with folks from all different backgrounds working for common goals. I would like to continue that trajectory by serving the town of Comar Manor, and in particular, the folks in Ward 3. I want to be a council person for our town and do everything I can to serve and to bring opportunities to the people of the town to foster community and identity and to work to help us become an even more beautiful place to live. I'd like to focus on environmental issues, livability, peace, enjoyment of our properties. 
A small town feel with access to DC, the multicultural and multi-generational nature of our town, the natural beauty, the parks, the history, and the connection with those who have been here for generations, along with those who have just arrived. These were the comments of my ward's citizens as I walked around and spoke with them over the last few weeks. It's what they love about Colmar Manor, and I share that love. I'm using the, ac the acronym CAT to express my hopes and goals for my next years of service here in Colmar Manor. CAT stands for community building plus accountability and transparency for our government. Thank you for listening. All right, thank you. You're pretty close to that three minutes there. Just a little ah. tad, tad bit over, but it's okay. Oh, darn it. It's I tried. Uh, and as, as I said, Mr. Bowles is the uh, only candidate for Ward 3. And moving on to Ward 4, we have the incumbent, uh, Melinda Mendoza, who is also the only candidate for Ward 4. Ms. Mendoza. So, Chief, if um, we go over the three minutes, do we get cut off? Yeah, I was, I was looking for the, the cutoff button, but... Uh... <laughs> um, all right. Good evening, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well. Uh, my name is Melinda Mendoza. I'm currently the Ward 4 Council Member here in Comer Manor. I have been a resident of Comer Manor for the last uh, 32 years. Um, I was raised here. Um, I met and married my husband. Uh, we were married here in the town, um, our little church, Comer Manor Bible Church. We currently have um, four kids together. Uh, we've um, been through the PGCPS school system as well as my kids. Um, we love Comer Manor. We wouldn't change it for anything. I'm very blessed that the majority of my family lives here in Comer Manor. So, <laughs> so um, why I feel like uh, I would be a good candidate for this position? Um, well, open. I'm, to, um, open, open communication. Um, I'm outgoing in the community. I'm in a lot of different um, groups here in the, in the municipal in the different in the municipality. Uh, ooh, um, of course, everybody wants an efficient and responsible government, right? So, in reality, I know we're coming out with all of these goals that we want, but it's all of us, whoever gets voted in, we all have to work together, right? So to make Comer Manor better moving forward. So um, I ask for your vote for reelecting me as your ward for council member. I know I didn't make three minute mark, but um, I just hope everybody has a good evening. God bless and take care. <laughs> all right, thank you. And uh, the next uh, portion of our presentation is for for question and answers. I think we'll go I'll go by candidate and see who has a question for them. And then once that's over, we'll just kind of open it up for everybody and, and see how that goes. Um, I cannot. Most people are muted. I cannot unmute you from this, and you have to unmute yourself. So um, some I've had to mute because there's some background noise, and others have muted yourself. But um, we'll go for it for uh, Ward One. Uh, Lois Blue. Anyone have a question or for Miss Blue? All right. Hearing none, let's move to uh, Malik Harding, our second candidate. Anyone with a question for uh, Mr. Harding? Is this open for everyone? Yes. Okay. Hi, I'm Malik. Hi, uh, how are you? I enjoyed hearing about you, and it's my name is Monica uh, Casañas, and I live at 341139 Avenue. Uh, we've lived in the town for about five years, I believe, and um, I wanted to hear from you. Um, you say you're a social worker, and you're very invested in the community, and you talked about um, the change the community has gone through and the diversity, I feel like, is very um present in our community, how would you um, look to unite um, all the different cultures and the and different populations that live in town? Well, personally, I feel that crossing information is a comparative part. Sorry. 
So first I would definitely look at the different diversity within the neighborhood and allow coaches to represent themselves. Personally, I feel like uh, Brentwood's a good example of how they get their town to come out and interact with each other. I've gone to their Hispanic Heritage Month. I've gone to different programs that they've done. And most of that is really based on the fact that they care about the individual rather than the overall. So I would think in my best perspective would be to take a look at the diversity within the neighborhood and allow people to voice their traditions or just really transfer information between each other. And that's by giving opportunity to do that. So right now would be more difficult, but even moments like this, like having virtual conversations and meeting up with people and lunches and things like that, that allows the community to come together. And we've done that too for IHOP. We've had breakfast with um, the officers and those are opportunities for community engagement. All right, thank you. Um, anyone else for uh, Mr. Harding? Right, and our next candidate is uh, Petrina Paxton. Any questions for Ms. Paxton? Hi, I have a question. Yeah. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Um, oh, no, you can go. Okay, is that, I think that, is that for me? Um, yes, go ahead, but uh, on most of our, the, the folks here, we can see the names. If you could just uh, tell us your name and perhaps which street you live on, and then go ahead with your question. Sure, this is Amy Galatly. I live at 3909 Lawrence Street. Um, hi, Petrina. I was, hi, I was curious to hear, good, thanks. Um, I was curious to hear a little bit more from you about like uh, you laid out sort of some of your vision um, and I just wanted to give you an opportunity to talk a little bit more about like how you would be reaching some of your goals. Like, do you have specific um, plans to work towards some of the things that you had mentioned? Yes. So, I mean, as Malik mentioned, we are currently experiencing a pandemic. So the unfortunate outcome of that is that we actually are not to meet, I mean, we're, we're not able to meet in person or actually have that physical contact of actually having um, organized groups in person. Um, but I mean, me having my experience in economic development and knowing how we can actually become a community um, and actually be a lot more involved, I would love to actually engage us in more of virtual meetups. Um, I would actually like to see us being able to cross collaborate with our neighbors. Um, because I mean, if someone needs their um, excuse me, if someone needs their grass cut or someone needs a service, we I've, I'm aware of our fellow neighbors that actually have these businesses that I would love to see us embrace each other. Um, and then I also know that a lot of us within the community have been affected by the pandemic. So how is it that we can actually reach out to each other and say, hey, I'm here, I'm cooking dinner, would you like some? Honestly, I mean, I understand that we have you know, precautionary measures are taken account, but I would love to say, hey, I've cooked some of my great old vegan chili. Would you like to have some? Like, just so that I can make sure that I'm actually lending a helping hand because everybody doesn't have the opportunity at all times. Um, so that would actually be something that I would actually love for us to have. And even when everything does become back in person, I would love for us to even continue to have that virtual engagement because, I mean, we all have to still take our precautionary measures. And, hey, somebody may not have the ability to leave out the house because they have children. So why not let us all get on a virtual meetup and have a happy hour, even if it's a mocktail? I would actually love for us to actually have that engagement. All righty, then. Um, anyone else for Ms. Paxton? Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Latoya. I am a resident of 3407 43rd Avenue. Um, so I am kind of late, so I've heard some of, of the presentations. Um, I know that Melinda is currently uh, my ward member. Was there anyone else? Um, I might have misheard that. Was there someone else running for our ward? No, she's running in Ward 4 unopposed. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anyone else, yeah. Ms. Paxton? Yes, hello. Oh, I, you can. Would you like to go? That's fine. I can go last. You sure? Okay. Uh, uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Bethany Vinston. Um, I've been living in Coma Manor for over twenty-five years. Um, off and on, but anyway, uh, my question to Ms. Paxton would be, 
Um, what are some of the goals you have set for some of our younger adults, meaning 18, between the ages of 18 and 20? Because a lot of them are kind of uh, straggling, if that's the correct word. Um, trying to grasp onto things because when I was younger, we had a lot of you know, programs, um, you know, to help us, you know, work through our advancement. Um, I would like to know, do you have anything set for that? Um, I actually would love to see um, our youth actually have the ability to transition into professionals. Um, I actually happen to have a background in HR along with um, organization finance finances. So I would love to be able to allow the opportunity for our youth to find their way in a sense of what it is that they're wanting to actually involve themselves in. I am a big supporter of education. I feel like that is something that no one can ever take away from me is how educated you are. So with that, I would love for us as an organization, I'm sorry, uh, us as a community to be able to organize um, the opportunity to more so train our youth in their um, professional career. So let's say we have little Johnny who actually wants to be an engineer and we actually have there's maybe 10, 10 engineers within our community. Maybe there's possibly uh, an opportunity for them to be able to have a shadowing opportunity or even for us to have um, different programming to whereas we can have like a youth night where they're able to shadow and learn more about the different professionals we have within our community. I feel that the more we are able to actually show our youth what it is that we're doing and letting them see how mom and dad and aunt and uncle are working so hard to provide roofs over their heads, then they actually will have the opportunity to one, be more invested in that, but then two, they'll appreciate it better because they'll actually get it at home. Um, another one of the opportunities that I would love to see us have is, um, I do re recall that at a time there was like a summer youth program, which allowed for our youth to actually work throughout the summer. I would love to see that get back into motion and actually be a lot more involved with all of our youth. Um, I would love to see us even having some type of summer programming where it, it does mean that it means that we have to have the opportunity of possibly getting grant money or other opportunities to fund our counselors and you know tutors throughout the summer. I think that that's definitely something that we as a community should support. Should support. All righty, thank you. And anyone else, Ms. Paxton? Okay. Uh, I'm I'm sorry. Go ahead, Miss uh, Monica. You can continue. <laughs> All right, sorry. Um, great. So I just wanted to like uh, thank all of the current council members and the mayor um, for the work that you've done. And I'm also so impressed with all of the candidates um, that have uh, that are running now. Um, Patrina, I loved what you were talking about in regards to a business directory for people that have like small businesses that live in the community. Mm -hmm. And I like the fact that you're talking about education. For me, one of the, the things that is, is very important to me, especially in this neighborhood, is outreach to um, the Latino community. Mm -hmm. I feel like uh, there's an opportunity there to connect them more. Um, I feel like uh, the population, there's a big population of Hispanics that live in the community, but they're not represented in the council. Um, so I'm, I'm wondering, what are you looking to do to, uh, to help that particular community? Um, and I know many others have talked about bridging divides or whatever. Um, how would you address that? How would you bring them into the fold? Um, I honestly have that has been one of my biggest um, thoughts in a sense of all of the things that I've thought about in regards to one, making sure that what I would consider as our underserved population, because there are I know of personally, there are some of the residents within the community that don't feel that they could be heard because they possibly don't feel that um, it's a it's an outlet for them or just that there aren't available uh, people that actually make them feel comfortable. And this is nothing against anyone. It's just more so allowing for people to understand that regardless to who's owning, who's renting, we all actually are contributing to this community. And I do think that that's one thing that's very, very important. And I don't feel that it's um, it's fair to say um, if someone actually has some disadvantages, if if English is not their first language, I'm sure there's a way to get in contact with them. So I definitely would love for um, us as a community to actually be able to embrace um, 
all of all of the demographics of our of our community, but most importantly, those that feel like they actually aren't heard or don't actually have a voice. So I personally will make it my business, as I mentioned before, to be available. Um, I am one of those people for those that live within the proximity of my block. They know that I actually walk around and speak to everybody. That is one thing I do. One thing I've always learned um, as I grew up is you can always greet someone with a smile. Don't have to say anything. Greeting with a smile actually can start a great conversation. Um, so that's one thing that I'm really, really big on. Um, but like I said, I would definitely make sure that I'm always available. Thank you. And just one last comment for everyone that's running, because I'm so impressed with everything that you've all said. I'm wondering if, if you can share your emails, if you feel comfortable, because whether you win the election or not, you're obviously an asset to the community. And I definitely would love to keep in touch. All right. That's right. Thank you. Um, I have, excuse me, sorry, this is Yolanda Barnett at 3605 yeah. Avenue, and I don't have a question, but i like to make a comment um, for the candidates to keep in the back of their mind after this COVID, um, post-COVID problems that we're experiencing um, from I've been around for a long time. Um, what would you consider, um, you know, the young lady that just spoke says she speaks to everyone. But what I have always thought of, unfortunately, most council members, once elected to the position, that's it. They don't know the people on in their ward. Um, what would be each person's uh, commitment to get to know the people in your ward and not only be available or um, accessible during the time of election? Because if you go around to each and every ward and you probably ask 10 people, who's your council member? They don't know. So what would each person do to ensure that they're known to their residents in their Respective ward. If we I said can, it was a comment, if, but it ended up being a question. Yeah. If we, I will. Um, for this segment, I'm going through each um, uh, candidate, and if we can, I'll pose or at the end, I can pose that to to each mm -hmm. one as a, perhaps a closing remark. Okay. Thank you. All righty. And uh, anyone else, Miss Paxton? All right, uh, going to Ward 2, um, alphabetical order, Irina Hobbs. Anyone with a question for Ms. Hobbs? Okay. I have a question. Yep. Prior, to, prior to this um, open candidate or open election, what have you done to get to know your neighbors? in your ward. Thank you so much for this question. So I I used to have a dog um, and as Doug mentioned earlier, and um, that really helped got me outside and um, walking the dog, see my neighbors talking to them. Um, so unfortunately I lost him and um, like a few years ago. Um, but since then I've been um, uh, working actually, the, I've been employing a member of my community, my neighbor, to work uh, for work on my house. Um, uh, he's done a lot of work, and I would recommend him immensely. Then I also um, uh, do whenever I go for evening walks, I would greet my neighbors and would um, talk to them. Um, and um, also, when I was participating, when I was, when I was part of the green uh, member, green team uh, member uh, uh, council, um, I would be taking part in my in the green up or clean up various community events, and uh, that also brought me um, to brought me uh, made me interact with my neighbors, and and of course I got to know them better that way. Uh, so I've been a very active member since the time I moved on. I moved to this community in 2012, and um, current ongoing communication with them, um, uh, just waving at them, walking, going for walks, or being engaged with them at previous events that was organized by the town is my way to engage with neighbors. 
Thank you. Thank you. Um, anyone else for Ms. Hobbs? All right, moving to our second candidate for Ward 2, Anthony Mills. Any uh, questions for Mr. Mills? Okay. Um, Ward 3, we have uh, Doug Bowles running unopposed. Any uh, questions for Mr. Bowles? Right, and Ward 4, uh, Melinda Mendoza, the incumbent running unopposed. Any questions for Ms. Mendoza? Oh, I'm sorry, Chief. This is Councilmember Jackson. I did have a, I didn't have a question, but I just wanted to say I'm so excited that Doug is running in my seat. I think I'm passing the torch on to a wonderful person, so I just wanted to say that. Um, also, Irina has, she um, didn't talk about some of the things that she was involved in, but she helped us out with the 90-day um, Cobra Man 90-day celebration. She also helped us out with cleaning of the town, also doing the Dueling Creek. Um, just want to say, I'm excited with the new council, the new ideas. I'm not going anywhere. I will still be involved, but I'm so excited with all you all. And good luck. Hey, hey. Thank you. And let's see, going to uh, anything for Melinda? Doza. Well, I'd like to make a comment. Um, this is Mayor Barrow. Um, I know Melinda is unopposed, but in her introduction, just because, um, first of all, we all work together when we come together and not just for wards. I mean, the, you know, the important part about working in the ward is you, you, you're able to get close to your neighbors and get to hear and know what people need and um, try to help people on an individual level. Um, but Melinda did not mention her engagement outside of the town, um, which is also very important um, in relationship to uh, Prince George's Municipal Association and uh, Mer Merlin uh, Municipal League um, and on committees in those groups that are actually work on legislation that goes to the state. And that's a part of something that we all have to do as well is reaching outside of the community. Um, as you know, Malik mentioned, you know, that he's had those connections which are also all very important. So I just wanted to lay out there um, that um, we have to work as a team and in all those different areas and, um, and be involved in um, different programs we have. Um, I'm excited about all of you. I hope no matter who comes in or who doesn't come in, that we all still come back and work together and do things together um, because you don't have to be on the council to actually be engaged in things. Um, I do want to say I'm very excited about hearing, if, I mean, if you don't mind, Chief, I want to no. uh, just you know make some of these comments. Um, I'm very excited about hearing um, those of you talking about the business to business um, adventure. It's been on my wish list for um, quite a while. And um, it's not also always easy to find resources within the town staff. So it takes the council members who are truly engaged and interested in that topic because we have a lot of entrepreneurs in town. And I, I do feel like we should be able to create a community around them. Um, and um, I do have one sort of giant question for everybody that I would love to hear from. Um, we engaged next door uh, several years ago and the whole idea of next door was to do a lot of the things that a few of you guys have mentioned in building community and you know hey this neighbor needs some help over here you know I'm working on my roof anybody in town has a roof you know somebody doing piano lessons or and I also wanted to before I forget I wanted to also mention that Anthony did not mention that he had karate classes at the town hall. Um, was one of the things that he had been um, engaged in heavily and bringing the youth together and building those disciplines and things like that. So I just want to lay out there some of the things that you guys forgot to say about yourself. Um, and um, I also want to mention that, you know, Malik was on the Port Towns Youth Council um, and um, and they did a whole lot for the town in, in terms of the community gardens and all those kind of things. So. You guys are all a, a, a big old giant, and I, you know, of course, I got to give my power out to Councilmember Blue because she's just been here and done whatever for for a long time. But we set up next door, and we wanted it to be a positive experience for people. But 
um, and I think Monica is very familiar with it, but it, it became a negative experience. And um, because it became more of people mad about something, putting something out next door, and then someone else piling on to it. And this is what happens in government that you can't necessarily easily see. You all come in to serve. But then a negative joke goes out there and it gets negative and negative. And so now most people won't use it anymore because it got so um, um, tense. So I'm, I'm, I would like to brown around the table how you might um, deal with breaking down some of that, that negativity that might come about in, in sort of some place because next door is a perfect place to build community but um once it gets ugly people go away so how would you going you know whoever wants to speak about it how would you sort of break that negativity down and, and, and bring things back to community well i'll go um i actually feel that a um an application or a, and a, a platform like Nextdoor, as you mentioned, um, Mayor Barrow, would be very much the um, outlet to actually having community um, engagement. However, as we all know, we're not, there are people that have bad days, right? So, and with that being said, it's not like um, we can actually change that. But what I would do my best to do is actually make a change in that and making sure that, I mean, at the end of the day, the fact that we would actually be using it to not only uh, make our neighbors um, aware of things, it would also be to get us engaged. So I would always make sure that there is um, a tone, of course, like I said, setting a tone and actually allowing for people to understand that yes, it is an outlet. And if it is something that should be addressed, that's where um, people that are in the position of council members pretty much serving as liaisons between their neighborhood and the mayor, um, that's where you should utilize that. So I would say that it would be my goal to make sure that for those that maybe have some um, extensive uh, concerns that they actually would like to be have addressed in a different matter, um, I would actually make sure that I uh, gave my attention to that because it very well may be an underlying issue beyond what we actually see that's being public. Um, and I would also encourage that you know, the saying of you get more bees with honey, I'm always trying to find a pleasant way of making somebody smile. So, I mean, at the end of the day, it would definitely be my goal to make sure that those that need to be addressed are, and I would try my best to also make sure that those that would happen to maybe put a sour taste in other people's mouths that they would still also be addressed because maybe they need to be heard in a different matter. Thank you. Any other con our candidates uh, wish to comment on that? Sure, I, I, I can comment. Um, so personally, I have, uh, it's funny that everyone's brought this up and everyone's really thinking on the subject of community base or community involvement as far as business, because that was something I thought about coming into this, just running in general. Uh, I'm surrounded by construction workers, electricians, and just people that hone their business and their crafts. Um, when it comes to next door and things like that, well, just public uh, showcase of issues, it becomes a problem when you attack a person on their opinion. I feel like private or allowing a person to voice their their issue to their representative to carry allows a, ca a pass off or just a carry off that's a lot more sensitive and allows people to voice themselves in a way that it's not judged or irreparable in a sense. Uh, personally, I know from doing social work that people feel most comfortable with a person they're comfortable with. They give the most information to a person they feel most comfortable with. So at the same time of having these virtual things, it never hurts to be old school. We've done our, our write-ups, we've done uh, note box inside of the town hall before and things like that, and they've worked before. And I know personally that some things took longer from our note box, but I think that duality would best serve the people, having both that virtual site and then having the personal so that people can have it in a way that fits their character best. Thank you. And, Thank you. And then, I see Mr. Bowles raising his hand there. Go ahead. And But you're on mute. <laughs> Oh, I must have muted myself because my dog was barking. Okay. Okay. 
You're you back. can hear me now? We can hear you. I think all of these things are great and I support all of them and I would participate in anything that you guys want to do. Um, but I honestly think that a lot of it is just walk around the town. You know, I, I said in my speech, you know, it's not just a place to close your door and be alone. I, I think that's a modern mindset. You know, I had a neighbor say to me, this is my property. I can do anything I want. I'm like, well, not if that's making the people around you uncomfortable. So what I believe when I walk the dog, for instance, a lot of people like to speed through the signs in Colmar Manor. We all get in a hurry. Somebody sees you looking at them, they stop. And if they know your name and they know what you've been going through, they care about you. So I know this sounds oversimplified, but I know Yolanda because I stop and talk to her when she's raking her yard. I know Skip because he leaned over the fence. Now Skip's 87 years old, right? I know Miss Martha because Miss Martha finally figured out that I wasn't gonna flip my house and decided to give me a Christmas cake one year. And now we trade Christmas cookies. And I, I, I know Terry Escobar because I met her at a town meeting. And, you know, honestly, it's like really the modern mindset is go inside my door. I mean, we don't a lot of us close in our porches when we don't even sit out anymore. When I first moved to Colmar Manor in 2010, I was walking down the street and a man sitting on his porch said, oh, you're just walking around the town, huh? And I said, is that not good? Is that not good? You know, it's like you just got to know each other. You're far you're far more likely to treat your neighbor as a human being if you know their name. You know, and if you reach out and, and we and, and this is another thing I would say, we don't even have to like each other to love each other. And and, and I'm not trying to get up here and preach, but it, it's just the truth. I may not like you, but you're a human being. And, you know, with regard to the language barrier, I, I was speaking with Terry about it. You know, she said, well, the town, I think the town is doing a great job now with all the documents that are coming out are, are bilingual. But the town meetings are still in English and it was expressed to me, well, I don't feel comfortable. And I said, well, I don't speak Spanish other than what the lady at Subway is teaching me. She's Lechuga Tomate. She's teaching me some Spanish. But right. But it's like if you are if you are a Latinx person and you're bilingual, come to the town meeting. It, it, you know, if you don't feel like you're participating, call the town and say, I need an interpreter at the town meeting. Every time the mayor speaks for three minutes, pause and repeat a summation of it in Spanish. Figure out a way to, as we're broadcasting this over closed circuit television, have a subtitle at the bottom in Spanish, right? Um, it's just, I know it sounds Pollyanna, but it's just the truth. We don't walk around the town. Just, I mean, I've, I've noticed since COVID has been happening, a lot of people have got dogs. And sometimes we encounter each other and we have to go the other way because our dogs don't like each other. But I have met more people. Just I know every almost everybody I know in town who doesn't live directly around me. I met because I walk my dog. Even if you don't have a dog, get out and walk. I know I know it's COVID times, but it's like see somebody smile, say good morning, how are you? You know, and and I was sort of sad when I first moved to town because it really felt like everybody stayed to themselves. And one of my citizens said to me, she said, I feel like we're factionalizing. And we don't feel like community anymore. And I'd like to see you work on that. And I said, I will do everything I can. But the, but one thing I would do is try to engage the people in my ward and all around the town. Also take ownership of that desire. Come to the town meeting. Call the town. Ask for things. If you're not getting it, call me. Email me. I'll go up there and run my mouth. The chief's sick of hearing me. I'm sure the mayor is sick of hearing from me, right? I will do that. We've all got to, we've all got to own this. This town is tiny. <laughs> I can walk this whole town in 30 minutes. And I mean, cover the whole thing. And with my little pup, and it's not that hard for us to get out. So I think as council people, once COVID is over, but even during COVID with masks, we just need to be visible. We just need to go knocking on doors and say, how are you today? Is there anything I can do to help you? You know, and, and as far as far as um, next door, you know, the whole world is in a situation right now where everybody's fighting. How do we fix it? We fix it right here. We fix it right here with our neighbors. And, and if you go on next door and you see ugliness, you check it. You check it. That's not OK. That's not OK. You get to know your neighbors. You know, it's just I think what we're doing right now is brilliant. I think we need to have town forums like this all the time. You know, I, I think this is great. I'm so happy to see the town reaching out through technology now. 
it's especially important now, but as you, as someone said earlier, as we go forward, we've got to keep doing this, especially for the younger folks. The younger folks, they may not come to a town meeting, but if we can up their phone with, hey, guess what's going on at the town? They might come. You know what I mean? It, it's just reaching out and it's that simple. Community building is just acting like a community. Get out of your house and act like a community. So anyway, I'll shut up, but the, <laughs> I'm, pa I'm, I'm passionate and I talk too much. <laughs> All right, thank you, Mr. Bowles. Any other uh, candidates uh, want to comment on that? Um, I'll, I'll make a comment. Um, I'll just keep it short and sweet, okay? Uh, I would say we need diplomats to represent us so that we can, that we need to keep engaging and that all of us will be able to come to the table. Because when we walk out there, we'll be representing Coma Manor and people will come to the table as long as they feel engaged because because resolution of conflict is always a diplomat's approach. And I can tell you, it's been companies I have worked for just because the uh, engaged that they extended contracts for. So I would say that would be the solution. All righty, thank you. And I'm going to go to him. Uh, Yolanda had posed a question earlier. Yolanda's still on. You care to uh, pose that again, and we'll uh, offer it up to the candidates to answer. Okay, if I remember what I said, uh, basically, um, post-COVID, what's your plan or how do you envision getting to know your neighbors, your resident in your respective ward, and not just when there's time for an election? Because a lot of people don't know who they're... A lot of people, first of all, don't even know that the town hall is where it's located, more or less the name of their council member. So my question, um, or better yet, I'd just like to make a statement for whoever gets elected to make it a priority to go out and knock on doors and know the people in your respective ward and the town. You know, you don't have to just limit to your ward, but just as Doug just mentioned, walk around and just represent the town, not only your ward, but then, you know, the entire Coma Manor and let people know that you're there and not just when you want to be elected or reelected. All right. Well, thank you for the comment. Just for those that uh, aren't aware, Yolanda is a, uh, a former council member of Ward 3, so she does have some experience in that. Um, Hello, um, I did have a question um, for my uh, council member, um, Ms. Mendoza. Um, hi, Toya. Hi, Melinda. <laughs> so, uh, Melinda and I have been neighbors for over 20 years, I would say. Um, <laughs> so, um, there are a few things um, that are, you know, I think that both Yolanda and Doug, firstly, let me just say this, all, I absolutely love this. I love that, um, and I appreciate all the council members that we have had in place, you know, over the many years. I know that a lot of the candidates have held their seats for many, many, many years, let's just say that. So I'm definitely excited to see that someone, um, some of our residents within our community is seeing, seeing and wanting the change that I know is very much so needed within our community. And I think that all of the candidates, I think that you guys are absolutely amazing. I feel like you have definitely brought light and definition to issues um, that has been problems within our community for a very long time. So to see new blood here, I know that our community can get back to what it was when I moved into the community because it definitely has um, changed, you know, over the years. So I am definitely um, excited about that. Um, so, Melinda, I would say that uh, both Doug and uh, Yolanda made some very valid points about um, being out in the community, you know, because a lot of times, um, 
you know, we don't we don't see our council member a lot. So it's like people have concerns within the community, but they're not involved. They're not they They don't know when the town hall meetings are. You know, they don't feel comfortable coming out, you know, speaking about it. So I think that to bring resolution to that, um, if you guys are able to put some type of platform together where people feel a little bit more um comfortable with voicing, you know, what they're seeing in the community and what changes they would like to see um, be brought about. Um, one thing that I think that we definitely need um, as it relates to our corridor of the community is that um, our wonderful park has just reopened and, you know, the gate was just recently repaired just today. You know, I don't know if it's supposed to be locked or open. Our wonderful resident that used to take care of that, um, he passed away, but he was the person that would lock and, you know, open the park daily. So today it was um, it was locked and we had these kids literally climbing over the gate that just was repaired. So it's like, you know, the kids, either they need something to do to entertain themselves because we can't afford for them to tear up the community and for money that's being spent on something for them to tear down and then the, the community has to, you know, replenish and spend money on repetitive things. Um, another thing that we need to uh, consider is the stop signs because we do have a lot of kids that are outside playing, you know, like your nieces and nephews and these cars rip in one through the stop signs daily. Yes, they do. Daily. Even when I'm walking my dog, there's been times that people have almost hit me and my dog because they're not stopping at the stop signs. So these are, uh, these are, you know, issues that are really, really of a concern because we don't want anyone to die, you know, or get severely injured from these things. But I would just say, you know, in your planning, you know, for the next round, if those are some things that you could definitely, uh, you know, put into your plan of action, that would be great. Thank Noted. You. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We're going through uh, each of the candidates. Now I open it. I'm uh, answered a, or asked and answered a, a variety of questions and a lot of information has been presented. Is there anyone else that has a question? Um, that, that needs to be posed. All right. I'll ask another yep. question. Yes. Um, the, as you guys know, I mean, well, maybe you don't know, but when we had our rec recreation center open, um, we were, the recreation center was well used. And particularly, um, I heard some folks talking about the young, young adults and activities. And so when it was open, um, we, we could have up to easily 40, 40 particularly young men in the gym, playing gym, organizing themselves. It was a op op wonderful opportunity um, to not just have folks hanging around. Closing the gym impacted that. Locking up the basketball court impacted that. I'm sure several of you guys are aware of the issue that emerged on Newark Road, um, which was quite concerning. Um, now we've sort of kind of worked through this and um, with between them and well, anyway, I would like to just get a, a feeling for the candidates in terms of approach to um, this the situation as it is right now, a resource which which we very much got to start using significantly well in order to give people a place to go and come exercise and all of that has been completely taken away from the community at this time during the pandemic. And if you guys, and this is even an open question, not that I have an answer to, you know, just what your thoughts are on how you in your particular, either your particular wards or over the town in general would consider things that we might do to um, um, help the circumstance. All right, any of the candidates can chime in on that. I'll, 
So, um, yeah, I was just like trying to draw maybe parallels to um, the current gym policies in, in the state of Maryland. And um, they're allowed to operate as long as they follow um, the COVID protocols and uh, operate a certain capacity per square footage. Um, so um, I'm thinking if we can, um, if, if it's even an option to potentially open up the facility, but uh, at a limited capacity based on our, the footage of the gym. Um, but however, we need to also ensure proper sanitation um, in either, um, well, definitely have a clear posted rules on, you know, uh, to sanitize, provide the stations with the sanitizing uh, solution, um, instruct people how to take care, but however, it would also require additional overseer, I would say, or a person, right? Somebody who would be cleaning regularly. I'm not sure if that's feasible for the town, um, but um, you know, to, to, to have somebody who would be like a cleaning person, um, maybe coming around and um, I think it should be done at certain times as well at the gym, at least. So uh, that that will allow us to have gym um, operational, maybe at half capacity or whatever is allowed under the current um, guidelines. Current guidelines are pretty, pretty low in terms of the capacity that we can actually do. We did we have open Zumba back up again uh -huh. because th there's only a few of them, so they fit capacity, but capacity is 10 per people right now. Ten and uh, ten people. Okay, so gyms are thinking. Yeah. Okay, um, maybe a little different. So for the Zumba class, that's okay. But um, so that would not. Well, that's fine. But um, for the basketball court, ten people. Like, if we can uh, sign up four, maybe for those people who'd like to reserve the four of uh, the court, maybe sign waivers, um, inform them of the protocol. Mm -hmm. um, well, thank and you. Yeah, and maybe like have um. Open it for as a trial, like a trial, like first on like the weekend um, to see if there's interest, uh, if people would like to play basketball, for instance, on the weekend. Mm -hmm. um, I would actually like to add on to Ms. Hobbs in regards to um, my my concern in terms of capacity is, is the town actually having the capacity to make sure that the space actually would be secure and, and monitored. And I say monitored on the strength of actually making sure that there is someone available to make sure that all sanitation is available. Um, but not only that, um, my current organization actually uh, collaborates a lot with depart um, the, the RECs for DC. So what I understand is, is that what they're doing is, is they do have a open gym policy, but what the way it works is, is you are actually able to sign up in certain time frames. So there's slots that are allotted and you actually get to sign up, which allows for them to make sure that the capacity um, has not maxed out, but you can actually like, let's say there's open gym from two to four, but there's an hour time slot that they actually get the opportunity of going in um, and they have to sign a waiver. They have to sanitize before going in and actually all of the um, equipment that's utilized per the per the session is actually sanitized and removed in order for them to recycle it. So it would definitely require that whoever was, um, I guess, staffing the um, the recreational area, one is very much well informed of all of the COVID, COVID restrictions and or guidelines from both um, the federal and the state, but just so that along with that, everyone it, everyone actually is aware. Um, so as, as much as you mentioned in terms of having signage available, um, but also, like I said, most importantly, having all of those um, sanitation PPE available, but there it is, there is a possible way to do it. It really is a big thing on capacity in terms of what can the, the town actually offer. Thank you. If I can piggyback, uh, I like for those answers first. So, uh, you guys, I, I love the fact that we are thinking about our youth because for a long time, me growing up inside of the neighborhood, I've always felt like we came second. We've always had things to do, like events, like for community, but as far as creating opportunities for youth, it was very a struggle. I, we had to really take steps to get towards it. But uh, to really follow up, I feel like we think too inside of the box. The fact that we associate kids only with the gym, we've given them a gym, like that's their fun, let them, you know, uh, it really goes to show how much work 
that we have to do with inside of the council. There's much more that could be done for kids. When you said we're posing your question, I thought about Christmas and what gets the kids to come outside when Santa's on the truck and coming around. And it's incentive. At the end of the day, children don't do much without incentive. If we are giving them the option to come outside and have fun, if we're doing something like a, a field day for the kids, and we made that known for the kids, they'll come out yes. there because this is fun. This is something they can get into and be active. No one wants to stay in the house all day. And no one wants to be locked to a gym. But the opportunity to have the gym is, is needed. It's imperative because we do have the uh, people here. I have friends that tell me all the time, well, the gym opening back up, man. You know, I want to go on a ball. And it's, I, it's not an answer I can give them due to the circumstances we're in. But seeing that there's people that are doing the research and that have opened their gyms, then why the question then stems, why is it closed for us? But This is Yolanda, but may I comment on that? Um, is, it, is it okay to Pardon? comment on that, Chief? First of all, the gym is an outlet, and we, when we're talking about the youth, we have to keep in mind the different, cat, different age groups. Um, and we have had ish, we have had concerns where the little ones come, and because the older teenage or the young adult is there, they can't play. So we have to keep that in mind too, in terms of the different stages. I mean, ages of the child of the youth, and keep in mind that we have to have staff present, and we don't have a we the town hall doesn't have a large staff. We only have one person who is on the late shift. So personally with with the with the way that the virus is spiking, I don't even think that we need to consider opening up the gym because a lot of the youth in the town, they don't participate as much as people outside of our town. And when we talk about having things for the youth, we must keep in mind that the junior high school level kids and the high school and the young adults who are no longer in school. There are different levels and different programs that we need to think about as opposed to just the gym. Because I've seen many times younger ones come up and they cannot utilize the gym because the bigger boys are using the gym. So those- Mr. Lana, if I can pick you- Sir? No, I was saying if I, because I agree with your point wholeheartedly. I was one of the kids that couldn't play with the older ones <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because so I was too small. To think, we need to think about all those factors when we are talking about the gym. That's all I wanted to say. Yes, ma'am. And the staff, and the staffing, because that is a concern. Miss Yolanda, well, I agree with things... you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. Yes, I spoke already. <laughs> I was just going to say, Ms. Yolanda, I share your concern. I, I think in these days, to, to the last thing on earth I would want is to have them trace back to Colmar Manor Gym, a, an outbreak. Um, and as much as I love our town and I love our staff, um, I don't think we're necessarily qualified to, to sanitize that gym to the point at which it would need to be sanitized, I think. But if there's a way that we can find that funding or pull that funding from something that we're not able to do during COVID and fun, funnel that towards a professional sanitation company and set up a schedule. My, my personal feeling is as we move into the winter with these spikes going up, I think everything's gonna be just shutting down. And, and the other thing I would throw in there is, I mean, I don't know the difference between football and baseball and basketball to tell you the truth, but I'm a big old nerd and I'm a theater nerd. I, I do teach at Howard University. My area coordinator there is the head of, um, He's a music director at, at Metropolitan Amy Church in DC. And between the two of us, we know every theatrical group in this area. So either a professional theater troupe or our graduate students or students, I'm sure there's ways that we could come up with, with programs. Our facility upstairs up above the gym, our, our meeting where we have our meetings and things, that's a beautiful facility. It's, a, it's amazing. I, I think one of the lost gems of Colmar, man, everybody needs to know about our facility and they need to be renting it. But I, I think that we could make, um, I could certainly help try to make those connections because I'm sure there's some kids in town that might want to sing and dance and act, who knows? I'm not mm -hmm. the only nerd around here. Um, so, 
So I would throw that out there, but I think more than anything, we need to, part of what we, our job is is to maintain safety for our citizens. And so. I, I totally agree. Yeah, I will just add, I mean, capacity, um, um, human capacity is um, the challenge when it comes to sanitation. Um, that's the big issue is whether we have the resources for that. And um, if the, the next um, here, I mean, in the in the CARES package, we had signed up for professional um, funding for um, sanitation of the building, but they never gave us proper capacity to open the building back up. So if the HEROES package comes in, we'll do the same thing, you know. Um, but at this, at this time, I think trying to come up with something outdoors is, is what we really need and, um, and to have volunteers who can help support something like that um that would be great um and um hearing all of you guys i'm really excited sounds like you guys are the type of people who will be really to roll up your sleeves and and be there in order to help those things happen so uh, one of the all. things that i actually wanted to add um mayor was to what you pretty much just said in terms of actually us having volunteers i do feel that um i actually would be a person that if i would if i were to hear that there was even something outdoors um that i'm sure the community also would want to get themselves more involved and they actually would want to i mean i'm sure there's parents that want to make sure that the kids are in, in a safe space so they volunteer just to make sure that they were out there to participate um but even not having the option of actually being in person, I would actually love for us to even, again, starting having some virtual opportunities. Even I, I'm a part of an organization where we host things for kids all the time. Um, we've had virtual game nights, we've had virtual talent shows. So I mean, I'm sure there's ways that we can definitely get our, our, our residents actually involved where it doesn't, it allows for us to still stay safe, still stay in the confines of our homes, but allow for us to actually be involved. Thank you all very much. Appreciate all those comments. I'm looking forward to everybody working. All right, and uh, we're in just well, about an hour and 15 minutes into it now. Any other uh, questions for the uh, the candidates? And, uh, we'll kind of to wind it up. Um, I just want to thank uh, all the candidates. This is a it's a, it's a trying time. Everybody knows that we're all in kind of in the same boat, and uh, it's. Uh, I'm glad to see the candidates uh, on behalf of the town. Thank you for uh, uh, filling out the petitions and being a candidate and for the residents on the meeting. You know, we've, for the last several months, we've been virtual with all our meetings, and I think it's uh, safe to say that this is our most well-attended meeting. Um, again, the election is this uh, Tuesday. Polls are open from 10 a.m. to uh, 8 p.m. here at Town Hall. You have to have been a registered voter since uh, November 9th. Uh, for those not able to attend in person, um, there is an opportunity to uh, vote by absentee ballot. Information is on our website, so here at Town Hall. However, that window is closing rapidly. Those ballots have to be processed and uh, given to the voter and returned by Tuesday. They cannot come in after after the election, regardless of, of what the circumstances are. Um, with that, uh, I guess we'll uh, to close uh, this meeting. Unless, uh, Mayor Barrow has any other comments? Um, I would only ask, um, well, one comment I'll make, I want all the towns to be very, very proud about. We ended self-response in the census at 79.5%. Um, we were fourth in the county. <laughs> we were fourth in the county and 19th in the state of 157 um, towns. So um, that's a testament to everybody in town. Um, congratulate your neighbors. Walk around, let them all know every, that they all did an excellent job. Um, and um, that's a testament to all of you because I know um, everybody was helping, putting out their um, the signs that said they saved the, the um, county $18,000. So um, with that, I don't know, Chief, you want to give one minute to each candidate to kind of let them just do a little summary? Sure, that sounds fine. Um, All right, and thank and, you. Uh, before we get to that, I'll mention that we are recording this, and once that portion is done with the the one minute per candidate, I'll we'll process this video and post it on our YouTube channel. But after the comments, I'll turn off the recorder if folks want to stay on. I'll keep the meeting open for five minutes if. I know there's a chat room going if you want to exchange email addresses or talk amongst each other for a couple minutes. I'll, I'll keep the meeting open, but I will stop recording once we go through the uh, um, 
each candidate. So if uh, Ms. Blue from Ward 1, um, you have a minute if you'd like to say a few comments. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, I enjoyed the meeting tonight. <laughs> Interesting and a lot of good candidates. Thank you all. All right, thank you, Ms. Blue. Uh, Malik Harding, Ward 1. Thank you all for this opportunity to speak to the residents as well as the mayor right now. Uh, I'm really excited to see how this goes. I love all the candidates that are here. Honestly, the change that's going to happen is going to be tremendous, whichever way it goes. So thank you again. All right. Thank you. Uh, Petrina Paxton. Um, again, I would like to thank everyone, the residents, as well as the mayor and council. Um, I also want to personally thank Ms. Blue for the time that she has actually invested into the community for her 20 plus years. Um, and as I mentioned, in, in this whole process in terms of what I actually will look forward to doing. And it's really more so getting us a lot more involved and allowing for us to have some of these virtual um, opportunities while we're currently experiencing this time that we are. Um, again, thank you all. And I hope to actually stay engaged with you all regardless of the outcome of the election because I am just that person. So I'm glad to see you all's faces. So when you actually see me, I'm going to greet you with a smile. All right, thank you. And moving toward two, Irina Hobbs. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining tonight for the May to the mayor, to the council members. Um, I um, would like to say this has been a great medium for us to meet and talk and just uh, face to face, have a, an open discussion, um, talk to our neighbors. And I hope in the future we can have similar um, meetings with uh, either by ward or as a town. And um, I'm just looking forward with uh, continuing the work and working in the new direction um, and um, um, yes, have a, um, a wonderful um, and good luck to everyone in the election who's running. All right, thank you. Uh, also in Ward 2, we have Anthony Mills. Uh, how y'all doing? Um, I just want to say this was quite an experience that I got a chance to meet every candidate that's uh, on the board. And uh, like I was saying before, I'm here to serve the community. And actually, I did have brought something to the community, which is my martial arts school, like that uh, Sadar has stated. Uh, I brought that to be the uh, medium that, you know, the youth and the adults can come by and learn, like, martial arts and self-discipline. Um, I feel like I would be the bridge to, uh, well, I would... Look, I grew up in the area, I be the bridge to get to know everybody and the one who to be able to talk to the youth. Like I said, I thank y'all for the time y'all gave. All right, thank you. And Ward 3, we have uh, Mr. Doug Bowles running unopposed. Doug? Thank you, Chief. Thank you, everybody, for being here tonight. My heart is really warmed, and I feel like I'm a part of a bigger community now than I already did feel like I was a part of. Malik, you're a very impressive young man. I'm looking forward to watching your future. Katrina, the same. You just exude warmth and, and community engagement, and it's just great to hear you. Irina, just what a wonderful presence, and, and I, from your experience, I'm humbled, and I'm thrilled to know somebody with, that's with the Community Development Corporation lives in our community as well. And uh, Anthony, I can feel your heart is really in Colmar Manor, and you feel very connected to it, and you love it. And uh, Miss Blue, thank you for 30 years. And, and if you continue, I'll look forward to working right alongside you, Mayor, Chief, Council, everybody. Thank you so much. If I don't, if somebody writes in my dog as a candidate and I lose, I will still show up at every meeting, just like you know I have. And if any of you needs any help, I live at 3602. It's the bright orange house with all the noise because they're beating up my house with them while I'm renovating it. Stop by, say hi from the from the street. We'll talk at a distance. So thank you, everybody. Have a great night. All right, thank you. And then finally, Ward Four. I'm Melinda Mendoza, the incumbent, running unopposed. I just want to say um, thank you to everyone that's tuned in this evening. Um, all of the candidates, you have wonderful, wonderful um, goals and aspirations for Comar Manor. So I ask that. Um, it doesn't stop after December 8th. Um, all, all of these plans are awesome. Even though you don't make it, let's just as a community get together and keep pushing for an even better and brighter Coma Manor. 
So see everybody December 8th. Um, good luck and God bless. All righty. Thank you. And a thank for all the, the candidates and the residents for participating this evening. Good night.